Hey, what's up you guys? Thank you for tuning in to another one of my DYI videos here on YouTube. Uh, today's May 5th, 2020. Happy Cinco de Mayo, you guys. First of all, I want to say Happy Cinco de Mayo to everybody who celebrates today's holiday. I know it's a tough one for you guys out there. Uh, because we're all locked down in this crazy pandemic that we're facing. Uh, and uh, not just you and I and your neighbors are going through the struggle but basically everybody around the world is and uh you know we all gotta you know stick together and you know we gotta be grateful for one country that this all came from but i'm not gonna go there with today's video uh i want to get to the main point and in today's video i want to show you guys how to service your car's ac system now uh the car that i'm working on is a 2005 mini cooper s the r53 model the concept I'm going to be showing you in this video can be applied to any modern vehicle's AC system. And you want to basically follow these steps whenever you have to do any major work to the AC system. Such as replacing a supply or return line, uh, replacing a cracked or damaged condenser, or whenever you have to replace a broken AC pump or compressor. Um, you're going to have to follow these steps to properly recharge your car's AC system. Okay, so here's the items that you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need yourself a digital scale that can weigh in grams. And the reason you're going to need that is because you're also going to need a, about a couple of cans of this R134A refrigerant. Uh, you'll need to basically weigh uh, how much refrigerant you're pumping into your system. Now, if you look at, for example, on uh, my vehicle here, uh, we have some uh, indications here, for example, for the air conditioner. And it'll tell you basically how much to put in there. Um, in this case, they want about 0.91 plus or minus uh, 0.02 pounds of R134A. So uh, in order for us to figure that out, we're going to have to basically weigh the cans. Um, you ideally want to weigh the can before you start um, injecting the Freon into the system. And as the Freon is going into the system, you want to continuously weigh the can so that way you know how much you're putting in there. And the second thing you're going to need is uh, a set of manifold gauges here. Um, you can get these, uh, you know, at a local uh, hardware store like a auto parts store, AutoZone or Pet Boys or Harbor Freight. Um, you can also get the uh, vacuum pump as well. Make sure you get the oil that goes with the vacuum pump. Um, and in my case, I got both of these for Jug. I got these off of a Craigslist ad, and the guy just basically didn't need it. So that's another avenue that you can go about um, if you wanted to buy a set for yourself and to keep it. And my plan, I'm just going to keep, uh, you know, maybe servicing other people's air conditioning systems around the neighborhood uh, to get my money back for these. But, um, you know, if you're just looking for a one-time use, you can definitely rent these out. I think they're $150 deposit at uh, AutoZone. Um, and if you want to buy them, you know, at a store, they go for about $90 for that and about maybe another $75 to $90 for this. Alright, so the next thing you want to do is fill up uh, the pump with the oil I showed you earlier. You fill it up through here and basically you get it leveled out. This is the leveling glass minimum and maximum level so just try to get it in between uh, it does require the oil to pull vacuum and to keep the motor uh, lubricated and to prevent it from burning out then you want to go ahead and connect your lines like I did over here you see so we get all of them connected there and make sure these are all tight use pliers on them to tighten them up and then you want to get the yellow hose basically which is the middle one and then you want to hook it up to this port over here and then after we do that I'll show you what we do next here Okay, so the next thing you want to do is connect your high pressure and your low pressure side onto your high and low pressure ports on this Mini Cooper here if you're looking at it from the driver's side or if you're here in the United States driver's side. Uh, the high pressure port is going to be the one that's the most front of the vehicle and the low pressure port is going to be the one near this engine bracket here. And usually some of these caps will have an H and an L written on it. That's one way you can tell. But also another way you can tell is, um, is that uh, these ports um, basically they're proprietary ports uh, they have their own size basically and you can't mistake them you can see over here so I pulled up um, the inlets uh, of these here you can see they're different sizes so that's kind of um, you know uh, dumb proof here <laughs> there's no way you can basically mix these up 
So yeah, just get those connected on here and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so after you got your connections hooked up, make sure that these valves are fully closed uh, down there and then down here on the manifold. Um, and the next thing you want to do is uh, you want to go ahead and plug in your pump and let's turn it on. Okay, I've got the pump working. Then we'll go ahead and then we'll go ahead and open up this valve here all the way. As you can see, and we'll open up uh, this valve here all the way. Okay. And basically, you want to let this run until you pull vacuum up to about you know 30 inches of mercury here. Uh, so you let this run for at least about half an hour to an hour, you guys, and we'll be right back. All right, as you can see here, guys, the pump is running. It's fairly quiet pump actually. Well, look at some of the specs here. All right, now let's go and look at the gauges here and see where we're at. Right now it's only been about 15 minutes and you can see we are already at almost 30 inches of mercury. So it is a pretty fast uh, machine here. <laughs> All right. And we'll let that run for a little bit more here, you guys. All right, so it's been about half an hour here, and you can see uh, I'm just about at 30 inches of mercury here. I think we pulled as much as we can out. And uh, the reason why you want to let it run for a little longer is because you want to pull out uh, not only all of the air, but uh, all of the moisture too. And so vacuum does that. It, it basically causes any kind of water to boil, and uh, it'll uh, you know draw it out that way under a vacuum. Uh, now when you're done, uh, you basically close off both of these valves on the manifold and shut the pump off. So that's what we'll do now, is we'll go ahead and close off these valves. Okay. Make sure they're kind of tight. Don't want any leakage. And we'll shut off the pump here. Now, you're basically going to want to let this sit now for at least another half an hour. You're testing your system to make sure that there's no leaks. If there's no leaks, then you'll still have a vacuum after about half an hour. But if there's a leak, then this will go to zero, basically. So then you're kind of just out of luck. So uh, let's go ahead and let this sit for about half an hour and see where we're at. All right, so as I told you earlier, we're going to go ahead and have to weigh these cans. And that's how we know how much of this R134A we're putting into our system. Uh, now these cans here... Uh, weigh in at about 440 grams and it says here that there's about 340 grams um, of product in here so I'm guessing 440 grams is including the weight of the can so basically we want to empty this all out because we need as required by my car 412 grams total so if there's 340 here then that means that uh, we're going to need about uh, 72 more grams, I'd say, uh, to get 412. So, uh, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and now um, we're going to plug in our line uh, into here, start the vehicle up, turn the AC on full blast, and then we're going to open up the low side valve on the manifold, which is here, to fill up our system. Alright, let's go ahead and do that. 